Hello, you metal pilgrims, and welcome to the new episode of our interview series. Our today's guest is Alex Ornumerson of The Vintage Caravan. Alex and I, among other things, will be speaking about the band's upcoming studio release monuments and the creative process behind it, rock and roll and its future after the pandemic, touring life, and much, much more. Yet, as always, before we start, I'd like to take a moment and ask you to join the conversation and subscribe to the Metal Pilgrim channel on YouTube and join our communities on Instagram, Facebook, or any other social media you actually hang out at to be able to submit your questions for all future interview guests, stay tuned with the updates and be among the very first ones to find out what is inside the latest rock and metal releases. And of course, it will help me grow this project. So buckle up, enjoy the interview, and here you go. Hey man, how's it going? Yeah, good. Good. How are you? Good, good. And we finally have some warm weather coming back, uh, coming, coming to Kiev. So it looks like actual spring now. Uh, so yeah, pretty oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we thought it was gonna be spring now, but uh, we're back to uh, freezing cold and and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's you know it's always this fake spring and then you get uh, winter again for a <laughs> month and then uh, we we already had that you know we we're, we're already past that uh, past that moment man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, how are things in Iceland overall, man? Uh, with all the pandemic and all this crap going on around the world, how are you guys coping? Uh, yeah, it's it's well, it's been kind of up and down. I mean, uh, usually the rule has been that when it's good uh, here, it's bad in Europe, and uh, when it's bad in Europe, it's good here, you know. Um, yeah, but the mistake is like, I don't know, like, uh, because it's an island, you can really control, like, you can really control uh, how, who you want to come in, and, and, you know, you can touch everybody at the border, and, you know, so nobody, like, gets through, um, but, uh, but there's been so much tourism in the last year, so they're always, like, opening again for tourists, and then you get more infections, and then they close down again. And then it's like, oh, it's fine. Let's open it back up. It's like, why don't you just keep it closed? You just know? get get it over with once and for all, and yeah. let's get back to you know normal lives because everyone is super mm -hmm. fed up and tired with this, man. I think. Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm actually uh, I'm I'm a little bit sick at home now, so oh. uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you better. Yeah, it's probably just a be, seasonal be, flu. I mean. Be, be careful yeah. hopefully yeah man <laughs> i mean yeah but um the good news is that the vintage caravan is about to release a new studio album monuments on april 16th man congrats on finishing it up despite any pandemics or anything that is going on around the world man Thank you. um could you just take us back for a moment and speak about the creative process behind it when did it actually start and you know how did it form into this piece we can hear today um so yeah we, it was a little bit like a um, start stop uh, thing but we actually we were in the studio right before the pandemic hit so actually uh we started recording in february and uh and we ended in early march mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah actually uh there, there was no pandemic when the album was happening we, wow. we had just heard about this uh, corona virus and we were like hmm, okay that's Sounds gonna go bad. away quickly <laughs> yeah. yeah right yeah so uh yeah, but it was a, it was an interesting process. I mean, we uh, uh, we didn't have too much uh, material ready like until maybe like a month before the studio, and uh, and we just been kind of like pressing on, wanting to do a new album, and then uh, and then we did it. And you know, it's like uh, usually we do this kind of like workhorse thing where we just you know we just did like a month of finishing up the songs. You know, like mm -hmm. five days a week we're just working. Uh, many hours a day just trying to get everything together and then we went straight into the studio for 22 days and uh, and yeah and we're just working like from nine till midnight every day you know <laughs> just, uh, and uh, then exactly when it uh, hit you know like uh, or when we, when it finished it was a, it was a funny moment because we were like okay oh thank god you know now this this you know two or three months of like you know just constant work is, uh, is over and uh, and I, I, I had planned this vacation to Austria and I was gonna, you know, I, I went to Austria and then uh, I, I was for a week, for a week it was fine. And then uh, I, I got caught in lockdown and almost didn't make it back to Iceland actually. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you, you made it out, man, though. Uh, so how do you guys usually divide responsibilities when it comes to writing new music? Do you have one main songwriter or you have, you kind of share this, you know, load and efforts? Um, yeah, I mean, it's usually like um, 
like most of the ideas come from either me or Oscar. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and that it's a lot of like, um, like coming in with riffs and and uh, and then maybe working, you know, piecing them together in a song or like uh, at rehearsal. So uh, so there's an element of everybody working together for sure, but it's mostly like like the you know the beginnings of the songs usually come from either me or Oscar. But but it was a bit different on this album actually because. Um, uh, like now on this album, there's more songs where uh, we just brought in like kind of almost finished songs, mm -hmm. and uh, and so and there's a there's quite a few songs that are just you know that didn't really involve a lot of stuff uh, except for just you know figuring out parts you know, and uh, yeah, it's like it was a bit different, but it's also uh, I mean you know we we. We are a touring band, like we were a full-time touring band. So uh, I guess over the years it's been kind of developing that you know we 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 work together. You know we mm -hmm. basically uh, almost live together because we're on the road together all the time. And so when we are at home, when when would be the time when we write, we're not seeing each other as much as we did maybe in the past. You know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's just the nature of the game. You know, it's like it's it's important to get space away from people, but then when we come back and work on something, we really know each other and we really can, you know, form something complete. You know, totally makes sense, man. Absolutely, Alex. And uh, you know, since since the album has been finished before the pandemic actually hit, you know, full scale. Um, yet at the same time, I was able to listen to the album and I enjoyed it a lot, man. Uh, there's still this psychedelic kick to it, and I think you will agree with me on this one. But um. So what are some of the lyrical lines that are running through it, you know, that, you know, um, even though they weren't influenced by the pandemic, but you think kind of, you know, reflect the today's situation? Um, well, yeah, it's funny. It's like there was a lot of like very personal um, songs on the album. And I, I could say like something that's come quite uh, more apparent as we do more interviews and you talk more about it it's like sometimes you don't even realize what it is until you just start talking about mm -hmm. it you know and then uh, and it, it, you know there's a lot of like honesty on the album it, it, it's it's like true. kind of yeah it's, it's, it's like funny that you know in the past it's sometimes been that you know you try to steer a song in a certain way or a lyric in a certain way because you don't want to seem to this or that you know but on this album it was more like you know let's just let it happen you know and then uh, therefore like there's a lot of there's a few pretty heartbreaking songs on the album mm -hmm. and there's a there's a, some you know very personal songs on the album like uh, i mean two lyrics that are kind of like i guess the most personal are uh, uh, this one's for you mm -hmm. uh, which is about oscar's uh, brother who passed away a few years ago and so it's like kind of a, a song for him and um, and then there's the final song which is kind of my personal song of the album which is kind of uh, written during some uh, uh, during a dark period mm -hmm. in my life leading up to the recording so uh, yeah i guess uh, honesty is uh, <laughs> is kind of the uh, you know the the main line through the whole album yeah man and uh, speaking about individual songs do you think you have a favorite track just one you cannot wait to play live um well Lately, my favorite track has been uh, Forgotten, mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, you know it's pretty fast and heavy. And the thing is, like I I do look forward to playing that live, but I also I I don't look forward to having to play it live because it's really like it's Hard super technical. fast and it's super <laughs> difficult, and you have so many uh, backing vocals, and it's like you know three piece harmonies like uh, a lot of the time, and it's just. Uh, I, I know it's gonna be one of those uh, songs when you finish it live, you're just gonna be like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the crowd is gonna go nuts, though. I think it's, um, I, I think it's, uh, it, it is my favorite, um, you know, track on this record for sure, and I think it's one Ooh, of the most, awesome. uh, most, you know, musically advanced in a way. Um, yeah, so I agree with you, man. And speaking about that sound, while you started talking about it, you know, it has definitely been defined by the '70s rock scene right 100 percent yet with these modern fresh elements in it so where do you guys dig inspiration in 2000 what is it 21 now i mean given that mm -hmm. most of the bands you know are you know are gone by now is it still the oldies or are there are some new bands that you look up to um yeah i mean uh, i guess it's funny because it's like it kind of uh... I feel like it's kind of based on like uh, you know the individual people in the band rather mm -hmm. than necessarily like the 
the bands that are influencing it. Like the, you know, for example, Oscar is very much like 60s, 70s, you know, uh, that's it's always been his style, you know, and he's always been into that since he was a kid. And, you know, like uh, Led Zeppelin, Cream, Deep Purple, you know, Jimi Hendrix, that's just, you know, been on his mind since he was, you know, five years old or something, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and, uh, Whereas, you know, I come from a much more modern place, you know, like, like my, my parents are a lot younger than his, for example, and I grew up listening to like 90s rock, you know, okay. like, uh, like Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So it's like, um, so it's kind of funny. And then Stefan comes in between and then there's a, it brings in kind of like, I mean, me and Stefan, we kind of bring in a lot of like this funk kind of mm -hmm. element, you know, and then uh so yeah it's a, i don't know it's coming from all over the place you know like uh, like these days you know we're as much listening to like old and new rock you know like mm -hmm. new rock like you know you can name something just like royal blood or or uh you know uh i guess you know um and then then you have like even stuff like soul you know just like uh i don't know just like the free nationals or something you know just <laughs> like throwing that in there you know so it's like it, it's really kind of all over the place, and and it's funny. Like the longer you stay as a band, the the influences seem less apparent. Like coming from bands, because it's just such a product of like who you are as a person at this point. You know, you've been playing uh, you've been playing music for however many years, and you've played like I don't know, like you know, a thousand different phrases. You know, like throughout the years, and you just and then you just forget where they come from eventually. You know, it's like uh, makes sense. So, so you yeah. gotta get influenced by yourself by the end, the end of the day. Yeah, I guess so, you know, and uh, and then we also influence each other. So it's really like, you know, um, yeah, I would say like the, in terms of like, you know, just pure songwriting, I think old school elements are coming from Oscar and then mm -hmm. a lot of the modern elements are coming mm -hmm. from me, you know, uh, yeah. and, uh, and then, you know, it's like, uh, um, uh, you know, along with that, it's really like in terms of production, I think we always try to go for like a little bit more modern production because it's just like, you know, a lot of the bands that are trying to get this like old school sound, I feel like they just sometimes they just kind of fail in that and it just sounds like a badly produced modern record, you know, in a way, you know, uh, because if you really want to try to limit yourself in terms of like sonics, you know, it's like and use the old stuff, but, you know, you can get some great results, but but there are there's a reason why technology advances, you know, and uh, not not all new stuff is bad. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And speaking about the technological advances and the perks of it, you know, while you guys are not able to go on the road, you know, just like all the other bands around the globe. So, any plans to support the album with an online event or you know some kind of promo of that sort? Um, yeah, we just actually we just finished doing a, like a live stream mm -hmm. thing. Um, so, which actually, because it's our third live stream uh, during the pandemic, so we did two originally um, through Facebook, and that was like a, more like a club show, just a few cameras, and um, and we just uh, we had it for free, and we just did uh, got don donations from people. It worked out really well. People were super supportive, and it, uh, it was just a great experience. But then, you know, the thing is, like, when you do these uh, live streams, you know, like these fully live streams and uh, you know everything has to be mixed in real time and the audio or like the video has to be edited in real time and it's just not always the best it can be so um, so we just did another one now it's, it's uh, on this pay-per-view platform called the venue mm -hmm. you can go to the venue dot event uh, with the webpage and there you can actually still access the show mm -hmm. um, but it's like a pay-per-view thing and we produced like a we did like a pretty big expensive production mm. with a lot of like lights and a lot of you know video editing and a lot of like you know easter eggs and, and you know stuff so it's like um this time we really just wanted to go all out in terms of quality you know yeah. um, because like the live stream is cool you know and it's cool to do but eventually like if you've seen one live stream you know you can't kind of seen them all you know and it's like uh, <laughs> yeah so it's like i don't know i thought it was i thought they were very exciting in the beginning of the pandemic but now it's like i don't know you know so yeah i feel like you have to kind of bring something new to the table 
That's true, man. And how do you think overall the music industry and that of rock and roll and heavy metal in particular will change after this pandemic? Will we be able to go back to normal and, you know, to real concerts? Or these virtual concerts are the new reality we all have to, you know, adapt to and get used to this idea? Um, yeah, I hope. I hope that's not the case because, um, uh, like, there's one thing that I, I kind of I respect the people, a lot of people in the music business now. It's like a, uh, there's been kind of a divide, it seems, you know. There's like there's the old school dinosaurs, you know, that don't, uh, they're on top of their, uh, their media game, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there's the people that really are on top of the media game, you know, because it's like, uh, you know, you can't really do anything physically now, so you have to do everything uh, via the internet. Or, or other mediums, you know, and uh, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I think you know, I think this whole um, uh, development in the whole streaming uh, platform thing, you know, is a very cool thing, and it's a, it definitely invites a lot of possibilities. Like if you are doing shows somewhere that you can also stream them, you know. Um, but I I do think that people recognize, you know, people want it to be the same thing, but it just really isn't. The same thing, mm -hmm. and and I I I think that you know while this is a cool development, it's just it's not going to be the final thing. So people are always going to be waiting for it. To, I mean, people are already trying to have mini concerts, you know, with you know fifty people or something in a in a five hundred capacity venue. Now, just the people are going to go to the show and see live music, and uh, um. So uh, I think it's going to take time, but it's, it's going to come back eventually. Uh, I hope so. I will unemployed forever, you know. Yeah, man. Let's just pray that all of this man is going to be over soon. And you and all the other bands are going to be able to hit the road once again. And, you know, and the rest of us will be able to enjoy a real life concert. Because I think that... You know, and I always say that, that rock and roll and heavy metal lives in sweaty clubs or in festivals, n not online, right? And uh, the, the, the sooner we get back to those, the, the better it is for all of us. So let's wash our hands, wear a mask or whatever it is that you have to do. Just let's let's freaking do it, guys. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I mean, I, I look forward to it coming back for, you know, totally. I mean gonna be weird going back to touring full time though but uh, but eventually it's gonna feel okay though. yeah and speaking about touring and uh, i'm conscious of your time so just a couple of more questions if you don't mind um, no worries i'm not so sure. that's good um if there was one band either dead or alive which you, with which you could play on stage with who would that be dead or alive Ooh. uh yeah i i just think about uh, i don't know I, I i i never really um, I'm, I'm not much of a what if kind of person, so I, I all, all of the dead people that I could tour with, I mean, would would also just be weird to tour in like the 70s, you know, like where they have to like hang PAs by like you know chains and stuff. <laughs> no, you know? Let's assume they uh, they are they they come to 2021. If it's a if it's an oldie, let's con let's assume that they're in our age. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, okay, yeah. I mean, I guess the band that would have been the coolest to tour with. Uh, for us, probably a whole time would have been uh, Rush, probably. Mm -hmm. But they just quit like two years ago. Unfortunately, so uh, yeah, we all yeah, know it's a shame. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, also we were like we were talking about at one point going to see them on the like the tour that actually went on to be their last tour uh, in the states, and we were like, no, they're totally gonna do a European leg as well, and then they just didn't. They just quit. Oh. Yeah, this is very unfortunate. I w I'm actually one of those guys who never got to see them live ever in my life, and I, and I, I I'm, I'm very sad and uh, you know saddened by that. Even though I think I had an opportunity when I lived in Boston, uh, you know, oh. like 15 years ago or something. All right, man. Um, and the last one. This is something we usually do to close the uh, the show, and I'd absolutely love to hear it from you, man. Do you mind sharing just one craziest story from all of your touring life, um, you know, throughout the years? Just one night that, you know, everything got loose. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it usually I can't think of anything, but, but now, I mean, there is this one story which uh, I don't know. I don't know how far this is going to go, but uh, <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, there was this one crazy night in uh, Portugal at an unnamed festival where uh, 
you know, there have been some, um, you know, people have been drinking and, and uh, doing stuff for the whole night, you know, and it's, it's also a little bit crazy. And uh, in some kind of like, you know, drunken thing, me and this British guy, which I met, uh, we were climbing on houses of people, you know, we were like walking on the house of people. And then uh, eventually we came across this church tower and we uh, somehow the church tower just had like an open door. Mm-hmm. So, and we went in and we rang the church bell. Oh my God, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah, and uh, some pretty angry Portuguese people came out at, uh, at 8 in the morning. Or like, it was like 7.35. So people were just like, what the fuck? You know, this is not the time when the when the clocks or the bells should be ringing. Oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was an interesting experience. Then uh, then after that, I was uh, lost in this village for a little bit. Eventually, found the hotel. So when I got to the hotel, it was time to go to the airport. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, wild night. Oh man, just just remembering all the touring and all the concerts, you know, all those stories popping up in your heads, just making me wish that you know you again and all the other bands will be able to hit the road once again. I personally would love to catch you guys live, preferably in Kiev, Ukraine, because I'm I'm Ukrainian myself. If not, somewhere yeah. else in Europe, but I'm. That would have been awesome. Alex, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Just as a reminder, I mean, actually, before that, any last message for the fans? Anything you want to share with them, old and new? Um, well, I just, uh, well, for all of our Ukrainian fans, I, I, we would really love to come to Ukraine at some point. Yes, and it's uh, sad that we haven't been so far. Um, but uh, hopefully when the world is all right, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be there. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for this interview, man. It, uh, it was a pleasure. Thanks a lot, Alex. Just as a reminder, the Vintage Caravans Monuments is up on uh, April 16th via Napalm Records. Make sure you check it out if you are a fan of uh, real rock and roll. It's a great record. I, I actually enjoyed it a lot. Alex, thank you so much for your time and keep rocking, man. Thank you. Keep rocking as well. Cheers, Thanks. man.